Let me ask you a question. Is what you have worth defending? We got to defend the faith. That's why we got to rebuild these altars. I'll tell you what we got to do, and I mean it with all my heart. We got to rescue truth. Truth has fallen in the streets. If we will rescue truth, truth will rescue us. Truth has fallen in the streets. It has. That's what it says in the book of Isaiah. We need truth and we need to rescue it because we can't function without it. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them, them being the church, with the truth. Thy word is truth. We've got to rescue truth, haven't we? Listen, I, I tell you what America needs is common sense. I don't know how anybody could even contemplate voting for somebody that's going to murder babies. Do you? Where's, where's common sense? See, and you know, there shouldn't even be a debate about that. I'm tell, instead of celebrating, well, I'm telling you, we, we better watch it. We kind of sit by and let late night comics brainwash us. I'm telling you, they were, watch this. I wrote it in the shepherd's rod. Their mocking mouths will be shut. You, you study Psalms 120. What's going to happen to these mocking mouths? God's going to pierce their tongue with an arrow from the broom tree. That's, that's a very special tree. The bark, and the, it, once it got lit, it's lit. And it, you just Now, here's what I think. I, you can kind of, you know, I'm just here for a night. I think the modern-day media should be tried for treason. That's what I think. I think the modern-day media. Look up Webster's Dictionary. What does it say about treason? Treason is an attempted overthrow of a setting government. If the, if the modern-day media is not guilty of that, who is? But see, you and I, God's going to hold us accountable because he never intended to straighten this out from the White House, but the church house. See, here it is. I'll, I'll, I, 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 quote, I quote this verse a lot. Psalms 115, verse 14 and 15. You'll like this one. May the Lord increase you more and more, you and your entire family. May you be blessed to the God that made the heavens and the earth. That's Psalms 115, verse 14 and 15. I didn't quote verse 16, but I'm about to. You ready? Verse 16 of Psalms 115 says, The heavens, the heavens of heavens, that belongs to God. But this earth is your responsibility. What happens on this planet is our responsibility. You go all the way back to Genesis 126. There's God's original intent. He's not schizophrenic. He doesn't have a whole plethora of plans. He's got one. Let us make man in our own image and let's give him kingdom control. God told me, said, I'm going to raise me a kingdom company of rule of his. I'm talking fast again. God said, I'm going to raise me a kingdom company that will rule the visible realm from the invisible realm, but they'll do it through a demeanor of love. When God got ready to describe himself, he said, God is what? By this shall all men know you are my disciples. If you have love, boy, we need it, don't we? Yeah. We need to learn how to love God. Do you believe that? I do. Well, it's, Chuck's going to come and just and speak to us. I, I, I'll tell you what now. I am amazed at the job y'all have done, setting up the ministry there in that Boeing airplane factory. But and listen, I'm amazed that you're reaching such a footprint, teaching people the importance, the importance of our history. Here's what God told me, and I, I'll, I'll get out of the way. Here it is. God said, Bobby, that's me, go where I tell you to go. Here we are. Do what I tell you to do when you get there. I will give the people, whether they want it or not, an impartation from Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. What? You're going to get an impartation from Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. Here's what that verse says. Now, the God of peace... That brought again from the dead the Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting, never failing covenant, make you perfect, give you everything you need to accomplish the task you're sent to do. I looked up the word make you perfect in the Greek. It means missing no component. Missing no component. So that, don't you like that you're going to get an impartation? Yeah, yeah, give you everything you need to accomplish the task you're sent to do. Listen, we need fresh oil anointing, don't we? We, listen, we can't live on yesterday's manna. We've got to have fresh manna, fresh oil. Now, do you want it? The Bible said, a priest, he should always make sure his head lacks no oil and his garments are white. Purity in oil, purity in power. That's what we've got to have. You, you, you can't get the power without the purity. He won't give it to you. Be you clean that bear the vessel of the Lord, the Bible says. You read the Bible, hadn't you? 
I get, hey, I get to preach in the largest youth conferences in the world. I use the same verse, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us purify ourselves from every bit of the contamination of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness and the reverential fear of the Lord, bringing our consecration to completeness. We need to talk about purity. It's not optional. It's absolutely essential if we're going to get into the hill of the Lord. Anyway, so I hope you guys will come by the book table. I'll sign you a book. I like verses that nobody ever looks at. Here's one. You ready? Here's a verse. You've poured me out like milk, and you've curdled me like cheese. <laughs> yeah. Now, you're not going to run out there. I don't care who's been here and find a whole series on that. <laughs> you've poured me out like milk, and you've curdled me like cheese. What does that mean? It's the study of biology. You start out a liquid and end up a solid. It's how you got here. You got a body for the same reason Jesus got a body. To make an invisible God seeable. He's the express image of the invisible God. Colossians 1, 15. Wow. What verse is that? Job 10, 10. You poured me out like milk and you've curdled me like cheese. You want another one? Here's one. If your axe is dull, you have to swing harder. That's in the Bible. That's Ecclesiastes 10.10. 10. Here's another one. You ready? The, the bed's too short. The cover's too narrow to get any rest like this. It'd be like me laying across this pulpit trying to cover up with my handkerchief. That's in the Bible. The, bed, the bed's too short. The cover's too narrow to get any rest like this. What is that about? It's about the futility and the foolishness of trying to fix your own life. It's, you just can't do it. There's a way that seems right. It don't work. He's the, he's the only way. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He wants you to come to him. Give him your trouble. Give him your anxiety. He'll give you his peace. Yeah, it's the greatest deal in town. He'll give you sleep at night. It's wonderful. Listen, I want you to enjoy Jesus. I want you to just really spend time with him. Psalms 46, 10, 11, it says what? Be still and know that I'm God. The book of Job says, acquaint now thyself with God and be at peace and good will come to you. Is there any benefit to knowing God? Daniel 11, 32b. Daniel 11, 32b says, but... The people that do know their God, they will display strength and they will take action. So the devil knows that verse too. So he'll disturb you, distract you to keep you from knowing God. Because if you get to knowing God, you're going to display strength and take action. This whole thing is about action. Okay, so that will be good. You ought to read this thing about dread champions. Okay? Yeah, I'll tell you, there's some stuff in there. God said, look up the names of these Hebrew men and you'll find the character and the conduct I intend for my end time warriors to exhibit. Yeah. And so there, there's something. Yeah. Anyway, but listen, I want you to drink this in. Chuck's going to come. He, I'm telling you, he's, he, when he speaks, he speaks the oracles of God. I'm serious. And we need to have ears to hear. Lord, I pray you will grant us ears to hear. Hearts to respond to what you say. Lord, we don't want it falling by the wayside. We want it to fall upon good ground and bring forth fruit that will remain. That's what the Lord told me. He said, explain your preaching. He said, when you stand before the people, he said, leave their head alone. He said, fling, fling my seed into their heart. I'll guard the fowl of the air. I'll keep them from stealing any seed. And I'll cause the seed you put in their heart to spring up to fruit that, that will remain. So God bless you, man. Get Get with it, do anything. Wait, the first thing we're going to do is stand up and thank God for the demonstration of the kingdom that we have just heard. Wow. Wow, wow, wow.